Hi, hi, my name is Mila Hacke and I'm an architectural photographer from Berlin. I come from Schöneberg. I studied architecture at university and I have been an architectural photographer for 20 years. I'm also the curator of the historical architecture exhibitions. I focus on post-war modernism in the West and in the East, as well as the Allies in Berlin. Since the 24th of October of last year, I've had my exhibition The Allies in Berlin at the Urania in Berlin-Schöneberg. I'm presenting the highlights of the architectural heritage of the four Allied powers from all over Berlin. My photography exhibition in EMOP, the European Month of Photography, was extended to the middle of April 2021. My exhibition originally opened on the 24th of October 2020. That was the 70th anniversary of the Freedom Bell that sits in the Berlin Schönebeck City Hall. This is where the West Berlin Senate would celebrate 30 years of German unity. 2020 was also the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. All this together gives the opportunity to focus on the architectural heritage and to show what Berlin has to offer. The architectural heritage of the Allies is closely tied to the diplomatic buildings. This includes Control Council of the Four Powers, which was then used as an air security center in Kleistpark up to 1994. The headquarters, which is now the Executive Committee of the Free University. Another building, which was of diplomatic origin, the former Soviet Embassy, which is now the Russian Embassy. There are many diplomatic conferences there and meetings. The building is furnished from the finest marble and the finest material from the entire USSR. Here's a look into the hunting room inside the Soviet embassy. In addition, I also show where the unconditional surrender of the Wehrmacht was signed in Karlshorst. I also show the theater that was formerly an officer's theater and is now called the Karlshorst Theater. This theater was completed in 1948-49. It was a completely new building with a large stage house. It was very modern as an officer's theater. This area of Karlshorst was only accessible for the military personnel. Four powers means that there are four headquarters, four airports and four types of espionage. I have maps from multiple different archives, many of which are from the Allied Museum collection in berlin zehlendorf and here we have a map that shows us the whole of Berlin, West Berlin, East Berlin, the Soviet zone, and all the air bases. I photographed all the headquarters of the four powers over the 10-year period that I've worked on this project. Now we come to an area that I can only represent in highlights. The Allied forces in West Berlin and the infrastructure of the barracks and settlements. Military train stations, training grounds, hospitals, malls, schools, sport complexes, movie theaters, libraries and churches. I have left out the housing from the exhibition because that's an extra research project. Um, I was working on this extra project on behalf of the Allied Museum and the Berlin Wall Foundation. I am showing the housing settlements of the Western Allies in Berlin 
Berlin, but in this exhibition, I am showing the most beautiful buildings, which are the public buildings. I would like to point out the interior of these buildings and yeah, that not very many people know or maybe have passed by without really paying attention to them. This is the former RIAS, uh, Rundfunk im Amerikanischen Sektor, radio in the American sector. This is now the broadcasting center for the radio Deutschlandfunk Kultur. On the side street where the artwork is on the facade, uh, there is this glass wall in front of Studio 10. In Wedding on Müllerstraße, there's the Sound of France, which is now also an art center with a movie theater and a theater hall, along with many other cultural projects between Berlin and France. There they have a wonderful luminous a ceiling. It is important that this architectural heritage is valued and seen in its overall context. And if we had started earlier, then we would still have this beautiful hall. In 2016, in the district of Reinickendorf, this former church was demolished. It's hard to imagine it when you look at it and see how beautiful the fine concrete work is and how wonderful and bright this room is. Of course, it looked more solemn as a church. I think the Teufelsberg Hill as a place of espionage is the most well-known location that comes to mind when it comes to the legacy of Allied architecture. But there's also, of course, the airport at Tempelhof and its history with the Berlin airlift. This here is where the interior architecture is particularly exciting. This is because the airport was never finished by the Nazis and for the most part was just a shell. Half of the airport was a barrack for the U.S. Air Force, and the other half was the West Berlin Airport. Here's a restaurant. It is the airbase restaurant that was furnished in the 1950s, and then later, in the 1970s, this beautiful bowling alley was built. The next photos you can see in the window and on the board here are again theaters, movie theaters, art, culture, and libraries on one side. On the one hand, the Allied powers also created cultural and artistic centers for the Germans as practical re-education sites. On the other hand, we see buildings that the Allies had built for themselves. The movie theaters, for example, these two were built directly by the American government for the American personnel stationed in Berlin. Later, we will see the German construction department built for the French and American military government. Now, let us move to the Amerika Gedenkbibliothek, the American Memorial Library. It was, of course, a gift from the Americans. It was built and opened in 1954 and was financed by money from the Marshall Plan, uh, that way it did not have to be paid back. It was a gift from the American people as thanks for the perseverance during the Berlin airlift. This is the Russian house, previously called the Soviet house. It was a gift from the GDR to the Soviet Union. It was built in 1984 and today it is the largest foreign cultural institute in the world. The foyer alone has 1,700 square meters of space. Here in the photo we see they have many different halls, a theater hall, a movie hall. Gifts from the Americans, culture and science buildings for West Berlin. Uh, I worked on this exhibition 10 years ago. It was shown in the America House in 2009. Uh, the Technical University of Berlin and the student residents at the Schlachtensee heritage site were uh, project sponsors. Here I have assembled a group of highlights from the main exhibition. Of course, in the collection I have the Pregnant Oyster, which uh, is the nickname for the Congress Hall. 
Uh, it is a wonderful reply to the buildings on Karl Marx Allee, formerly known as Stalin Allee in East Berlin. Here also we have the Steglitz Klinik, uh, the Benjamin Franklin University Hospital, and the main building of the Henry Ford Building of the Free University of Berlin. Here we see the student village at Schlachtensee. Maybe I can point out Eleanor Dulles. She was the Berlin commissioner and sister of John Foster Dulles, who was the Secretary of State for the USA. She was also the sister of Alan Dulles, who was the head of the CIA. She was in charge of the Berlin office of the State Department. She was super busy, and one could see her as Miss Berlin today, because she initiated all of these beautiful buildings. Here, perhaps, a short word about the exhibition. This exhibition takes place in the EMOP, European Month of Photography, and therefore I wanted to give all visitors the opportunity to first look at the photos, practically ideology-free. And then, if you have questions, what is this, what am I being shown, then you can find the answers on the boards. This shopping and cultural center has been demolished in the city Foch. Attached to the center was the church, which was connected with a bridge across the street. The British had their space around the Olympic Stadium, near where their headquarters were. Here on Theodor Heusplatz, the British also had many buildings, including a large club. For example, this apartment building here, built by Werner Dittmann, the Senate building director of West Berlin, who would have been celebrating his 100th birthday this year. These buildings here were the most used by the British um, on Theodor Heusplatz. Of course, the architectural heritage goes as far as the schools of the former Allied Armed Forces for the children of the families stationed here in Berlin. These schools continue to be schools today. This is the John F. Kennedy School. And this is the French school. It is now the Romain Roland High School in the city Foch. Modeled after Hans Scherun, this school was built by Wolf von Möllendorf. Ah, yes, and this is La Glande Movie Theater. It is up for sale at the moment. It is on Kurtschumacher Damm and it's across from the closed Tegel Airport. From my exhibition from 2009, Exhibition of Gifts from America, I have chosen a couple of photos that are particularly important to me. As a result of the 70th anniversary of the Freedom Bell, this exhibition takes place. Of course, it is also important that I show you the beautiful city hall of Berlin Schöneberg. This tower was built brand new after the war. It was destroyed during the war, and the idea was born to house the Freedom Bell in this new tower. The bell was modeled after the Liberty Bell. They had to ground it and create a new platform and housing for the bell in the tower. This competition was won by Professor Dubus and then built. The Marshall House is on the exhibition site next to the radio tower and across from the radio palace. In retrospect, I would also consider the Marshall House as a gift from the Americans. It was built for one of the first German industrial exhibitions in 1950. This pavilion building here was built by Bruno Grimmeck, who was the head of the building department of West Berlin. Here is a beautiful view of the Henry Ford building from the interior. The basic concept of the first hall shows the Henry Ford building as a light glass pavilion and was completed in 1954. 
It was very similar to that of the Marshall House, which was finished in 1950. The Henry Ford Building is by the architects Sobotka and Müller. It is a multifunctional building, uh, and the Alimax, which is very well known, is the lecture hall of the Free University in Berlin. Here is the interior of the World Culture House. Here we can see the dome and the large pillars, along with the foyer, which was made a little taller to accommodate the footpath, as well as the great hall above it. In this Congress hall, the Bundestag also met the parliamentary representatives in West Germany. This was more symbolic for Berlin, since the Bundestag was actually in Bonn. Of course, this called for extra Soviet fighter planes to fly over. This board shows more American gifts, and here we can see the student village at Schlachtensee. It is a small village that emerged according to the re-education plans. It is supposed to have a self-administrative student body. It has a beautiful garden area, and students have relatively small housing so that between 25 to 30 students reside in the same house. This means there is a lot of community space. The student village was built in several different construction phases, and this photo here uh, shows the community house that is right on the village square. It is wonderful that I have received the approval from so many archives to share their photos with you here. And they come from many different sources, state archives, a few are from the federal archive, and many are from the districts of Berlin archives, or they are directly from institutions like the Charité Hospital or the Free University and the Academy of Art and their architectural archive. Here we have an aerial photograph of the complete free university of Berlin, including the Henry Ford building. We also have a photo of the model that would become the American Memorial Library. And here we see bookcases being brought in. Here we see the flagpole of the Marshall House, and we see the flagpole sits on top of the Snails Pavilion. It is probably still stored in the Berlin exhibition as a steel frame. Of course, here we have these fantastic photos of the Freedom Bell um, when she was inaugurated. There were about 300,000 people at the inauguration in the side streets, in the main square of what then was Rudolf Wilde Platz and is now John F. Kennedy Platz in front of the Schöneberg City Hall. Here we see the assembled documents with the signatures of the donors um, that is now in the document chamber of the Schöneberg City Hall. Here we also see a Rios radio broadcasting car right in front of the Berlin Airlift Memorial. So I hope that you enjoyed the digital presentation of this exhibition. There is also the website of the Karlshorst Tour, which I made in association with the Kulturring. You can find the link to the website under the video. Thank you very much. Thank you.